Welcome back to another episode of the Unbreakable Sentai Podcast, everybody. I'm James. Woo-hoo, I'm Darius. <coughs> I'm Noah. Uh, this is episode 48. I looked it up and I just said it. Yeah. We had a ch- shitty sandwich. <laughs> 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 I was like, is this a bit? Or what's going on? Yeah, same. <laughs> it seemed like he planned it out. <laughs> I also uh, also love that we both looked at Noah, and then he looked at us like like he didn't know what was going on. And I was like, does it come behind me? Like, you instantly made me go, is it, where'd it come from? <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you freshly shave yesterday? Mm, yeah. Nice. It looks good. It's yeah, really it does good. look good. So I've been told. I mean, when you took off the beanie, I was like, ooh. You saw Invincible? Crisp. So I've been told. You saw Invincible? No. What'd I, you say? I said, so I've been told. Oh, I thought you said I saw Invincible. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was going through the characters of who has a bald head in Invincible. <laughs> <laughs> That's good shit. I mean, I've been bald for months now it looks real real crisp though when it's got like oh. the, the the like right now sure it's fresh as fuck no yeah. um do you, do you oil your scalp oil your scalp i have like some like shaving balm i put on it like after i shave yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. it's fair <clears throat> i don't use a lot of like products, products on my face or head i feel I, I, yeah. I feel like I should more. I don't either. Like, I don't have any, like, lotions or anything. I, I have, like, lotion, but I don't, like, use it on my face. Right. It's usually in my other head. Um, I wash my face with, like... <laughs> <laughs> <I don't... laughs> it's a slow burn. Yeah, Darius just let it pass. And I'm just like, <laughs> did I hear him right? Nah, I don't... <laughs> I, I dry robe. Yeah, I was gonna say, there's no real way to... To shift from that, so uh, I do too. I uh, um, I wash my face with like a uh, goat milk soak soap, and uh, I just put coconut oil on my face after I got a shower. Sure. So that's about it, though. Yeah, I was gonna say I think you did do the most between any of us, because I I did buy some like beard, uh, like sure. oil. To start putting on there, but I don't really like it. It smells fine, but it's kind of weird. Yeah. If and, I could grow a beard, I'd probably like use more products. Oh, can you not? I don't know. I mean, I've been trying. Yeah. Yeah. I <coughs> I also was trying, and then I went to the whole I don't give a fuck anymore phase and yeah. let it get past the 14 year old facial hair. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I guess I can kind of grow something. I, I, I can keep it, I guess. Yeah, it's just like my cheeks don't like come in. Yeah, you remember John, who we used to go to school with? He was patchy as fuck. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, he he, was was like... He was that guy. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I was going to say, I was trying to keep it like on the DL. Speaking of beards, does that girl have a beard on your computer? Is that like a five o'clock shadow on there? No, it's just regular shadow. shadow. Oh. Yeah. It's like wavy, (laughs) so I was just trying to figure out why is it wavy. The the form isn't great. (laughs) I think it's because they're, so, they're trying to do like motion while they're driving underneath streetlights, sure. but that's kind of hard to do visually on a single image if it's your first time trying it. You mm. know what I mean? And you said this is the gay manga? Gate. Oh, okay. Gate. And thus went the JSDF. Oh, okay. Yeah. You need some like Q-tip suit? <laughs> that is like the third time you've misheard us. <laughs> oh, probably. I don't know. That's fair. Yeah. Uh I listen to music way too loud, so my hear- hearing's probably going to yeah, go eventually. That's fair. <laughs> Trisha lit me up because I gave her, when I first got those headphones, mm-hmm. I gave it to her for to her to listen to. And she took on, she's like, do you usually listen to them that loud? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I think my right ear is going to shit. It's either that or my wireless earbud on the right is like kind of low. Oh, yeah. I feel like there's a difference. You uh, Sometime today, you should put mine in. Just shoot, see if it's All your right. head. <laughs> <laughs> what? <Yeah>, burp. <laughs> you tried to fight through it, or the it was, hiccup? It was a hiccup. The, you tried to fight through it. <laughs> I just felt so bad, and I was hoping the listeners didn't pick up on it because it was like it caught me off guard, and I was just like into the mic. Um, no, I don't know about you guys, but I don't, I don't use face stuff either. Because even in high school, when I would like put face stuff on, to deal mm. with acne. 
I would break out more. So, like, I never had, like, a big acne problem. Sure. And any time that I had acne and it was like, oh, put on witch hazel or whatever, it would make me break out more. And I was like, fuck, fuck this. You know? But, I don't know. I don't think either of you really have blemishes, so. Uh, it was, like, kind of bad here. I think I have, like, some, like, acne scar there. Yeah. A little bit. I probably do, too, actually. Because I still get them from time to time. So, the... At my temple. Ooh. Let's just know where to hit <laughs> So I got a question for you guys. I saw a dumb article that said that Suda51 was uh, in talks with Marvel. That can't be true. About making some games. That <laughs> can't be true. Was it, was it one of those weird Google ad, uh, articles where you open up Google and just gives you hundreds of bullshit? Uh, kind of, but it was from multiple sources. I didn't click any of them because, like you said, they're bullshit. He can only be do- he, he, the only person they'll trust him with is Deadpool. Which, at the same time, he might be able to make him actually reasonable, right? Like, he might be able to make him a decent character in a game. Yeah. Because the other game was fine, but it was like a Devil May Cry clone. Which is like, I guess, we've got Devil May Cry, we don't need you. Yeah, it wasn't, like, special. Yeah. I don't see him trusting him with anyone other than Deadpool. Moon Knight. I don't think they'll give him Moon Knight. No, he's too popular right now. No, I think they're trying to, like, make some Moon Knight serious. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, I don't think he's popular right now, but they're definitely like using him. That's true. Yeah, I definitely misspoke on that one. Yeah. But it got me thinking. If you could pick any developer to make any game for any character, no holds barred, right? Like, if you want to say Suda51 to make a Psylocke game, go for gold, you know? But who would you, who would you pick? Because this is kind of like that dumb thing I asked where, like, it was like a year or so ago when I was like, what movie director do you want to reboot a franchise, right? And it's like, oh, I want Zack Snyder to reboot Harry Potter. You know, do something really fucking stupid <laughs> where the movies are going to be dog shit. But you don't care. Oh, man. That's a very good question. Right? Because I feel like there's a lot of people out there that could do re- like a lot of good work with a lot of weird Properties. IPs. Yeah. yeah. Fuck, dude. Um, Especially because, like, I would never have thought that Insomniac was going to be able to make the best Spider-Man game ever created. Mm-hmm. But here they are. <laughs> like, goddamn. Uh, I would probably want the the people who made God of War, the new God of War. Mm-hmm. Studio Monica. Yeah, I, I would let them see them do a Punisher game. Punisher? Where, where he isn't just... <laughs> killing the worst ways you could possibly kill like it's still violent yeah but give punisher like more to do you 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 want them to do it because they were able to humanize kratos so they should be able to humanize the punisher yeah okay because i was like thinking about it from a gameplay standpoint which is why i was like i had that knee-jerk reaction of like really you know but no that's that's totally fair because they got a good track record of turning a shitty character into a decent father so (laughs) I think Naughty Dog could do well with, like, a superhero, kind of like Captain America, where he's not, like, flashy. Yeah. Honestly, I think, just given the nature of, like, Last of Us 1 and 2, I think Naughty Dog could make a really good Wolverine game. I agree. Like, that that kind of setting just fits well for that. And the platforming with uh, how they do Uncharted will work with Logan as well. (laughs) Yeah. Swinging around and just climbing shit with his claws. Can I just say one of my favorite things the old SNES games always used to do with Wolverine is that they'd have the animation where he'd climb by jamming the claws into yeah. the wall. And it always just like fucking gave me a half chub, you know? Because it's just like crunch, 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 crunch. And I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> I don't know. We haven't ever had a really good X Men game. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out who can pull off a good X Men game. It's in like. Well, X Men, but Wolverine War- Origin was good. I yes, heard. that's why I keep yeah. hearing. Yeah. Darius wants to play that. Oh yeah, I want, I've been I wanted to play it for a long time. You know who made that? No, Raven Software, Ooh. based in Madison, Wisconsin. They currently work on Call of Duty Warzone. <laughs> so I mean, not. Call of Duty is a good game. I can't hate on Call of Duty. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, the company that made the new. Uh, Crash game, Toys, Toys for, for Bobs. Bob's now works for on Call of Duty. Yep. So that's pretty cool. 
People, people were saying that uh, Microsoft. No, they work for Microsoft. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> people were like hoping they're like maybe God they'll fucking minds. take them and have them work on rare properties. Yeah, Microsoft doesn't give a shit though. Exactly. They're just gonna close the studio in like three months. Yep. And we're not gonna see any games. Yep. They're gonna take all of the existing IPs, move them onto Game Pass <laughs> to say, look at the games Sony doesn't have, and it's like, yeah, but you still don't have games. Yeah. Dude, I, I swear to God, like, on iPhone, they just, like, posted something that was like, oh, fucking Sony's dead because Microsoft owns Activision Blizzard now. I'm like, Microsoft's been behind Sony and still are for, like, the last six years. Yep. They've always been buying studios, so this is nothing new. Yep. And even with all those studios, the only thing they've put out is, like, a shooter and a racing sim for the last six years. Not not looking too good. Yeah, well, Sony's just like, yeah, you guys just make games, and they're fucking amazing because Sony lets them do what they want to do. Yep. <laughs> dude, I, just know, want, just I just want fucking cope games. with your six hundred dollar Xbox. Fucking idiots. Dude, on that on that topic, kind of fucking. Uh, there's a there's another rumor where there's like a new Sony commercial coming out, and they're like, yeah, the numbers one, two, and three are really special to us. So on January 23rd, we're putting out a new, like, trailer for the PS5 and all this stuff. And it's by this super famous, like, musician. Mm -hmm. And everybody's, like, sitting here and they're like, what the fuck does 1, 2, and 3 have to do with your shit? And everyone kind of jumped on it and they're like, oh, shit. Are you going to allow PS1, 2, and 3 games to be on the PS5, like, backwards compat? Can you get an emulator running? What are you trying to do here? Yo. And if so... Could they software update him to an emulator? They might. They could. I don't know how that works. I mean, if Nen- if Nintendo can, right? Right. I'd say PS1, you could easily do. Why Why wouldn't you be able to? PS2 would be harder. Be absolutely insane. Yeah. If they just like came out and said, yeah, you can use the discs you own. Yep. That'd be fucking ridiculous. I'd, I'd, I'd try to get a second PS5 for in this room. Just swap out the rest of my fucking shit here, you know? Yeah. Like- God damn. <laughs> That would be insane. I uh, game changer, right? Like, yeah. Because then Matt yeah, couldn't Xbox. say anything about Microsoft. <laughs> Xbox owners are gonna be like, "Boom, more game for yeah. <laughs> We've been able to do that for years. Yeah, but now we can play games that are good. Like, <laughs> I'm really happy you guys could play like what fucking Crimson Skies and Blinks, but uh, we're gonna go over here and play Maximo yeah, but, and Silent Hill Two. But the new Rainbow Six Extractions on Game Pass. Oh, Game Pass. I get to play a game that I don't want to spend money on, which proves that it's not the game I want <laughs> yeah, to play. Yeah, it's not worth money. <laughs> <laughs> you thinking about over there, Darius? Uh, who can make a good X Men game? Yeah, honestly, because because here's my question about that: do you, do you want it to be a squad based? How many how many X Men do you need for you to consider it an X Men game? Right. I'd, all I need is Cyclops, Gambit. The main, the main five from the like Nightcrawler it's, it's, and Jean Grey. That's that's uh, it. That's all I I need need. Yeah. But I, I was thinking this. Uh, do you think Nintendo could do it? Could pull it off? Hmm. <coughs> I think the Genshin Impact Studio could. What have they made? Genshin Impact. <laughs> oh. But like it's it's like think about it. It's like Breath of the Wild, but you can swap characters on the fly, and they all matter. And they all have unique, like, abilities. So just knowing that they were able to make that work, even if it was just, like, being able to swap between the five X-Men that, like, that we care about, you can make it work. Like, mm-hmm. you can make something out of that. Yeah. I don't need to see everybody on screen at once. I just need to know that I can play as them when I want. Yeah. You know? Square Enix could make a good X-Men game. <laughs> Well, that's Crystal Dynamics. <laughs> yeah, I was like, Crystal Dynamics, bro. <laughs> Fuck so, I wanted to say Crystal Dynamics, but I wasn't sure. Yeah. Actually, so I was like, ah, oh, Square's, like, publishing it. So. Honestly. We would know exactly what yeah, you're talking yeah. about. Square either. could. The Final Fantasy XV team? Final Fantasy XV is fun. Yeah, Tabata I, and them. Yeah, yeah, and, like, the the characters you play with is fun. Playing with Ignis is fun. And Playing at the end of it, when you can finally switch, like, when all the DLCs came out and you yeah. can switch between them in the story mode on the fly. Yeah. Worthwhile. So Square Enix could possibly actually do that. Yeah, I think I think you actually jokingly hit the nail on the head. Oh, there. yeah. <laughs> uh, <nice. clears throat> so, yeah. Too bad they release one game every 15 consoles. What about DC properties, though? What about DC properties? (laughs) I like Batman. 
Yeah. yeah. He's well, animated. Good thing that he's already gotten four games. <laughs> four good games, you know? I like, I like Batman, and I like... Yeah, Batman's already got his yeah. rock steady. I like... Exactly. Let, let someone else get some shine over here. I like... Uh, Do you? Seems like you're struggling. Uh, Sega gets flesh. <laughs> I mean, I yeah, that's that's, that's like, a layup right there. <laughs> that's a layup. I just I just want to see the Flash go in the dumb like spin <laughs> things now, <laughs> like doing the fucking like whoa. <laughs> oh, that didn't play good for audio at all. <laughs> the fucking loop de loops. That what that's what they're called. <laughs> I like Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle's cool. I like Blue. <laughs> Insomniac could make a good Blue Beetle game. Yeah, totally. But I mean, is you know, uh, that, is, is that because that they already made another? I think it's impossible to make a su- based. Superman game. <laughs> yeah, totally. I don't think you can't make it right because you want to be all to, all powerful, but then you don't have a fun game. Yeah. How 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 fun can God Mode take you? The answer is about three hours when we were children playing Grand Theft Auto. Like we all know the answer. <laughs> Maybe ten if you find some bugs, but. <laughs> Uh, DC, I don't, I don't, I don't think they have anyone I don't care about. No, I, I mean like, Martian Manhunter, I care about, but I'm the only one. I like Batman. Yeah, <laughs> Batman's pretty cool. Yeah, it's like the white bread of DC properties. <clears throat> it really is. <laughs> I don't know. Fuck that. I, I'll I'll go ahead and say Teen Titans. Any version of the Teen Titans I've always appreciated. That's yeah. DC. Give them to Crystal Dynamic. Yeah, give them to Crystal yeah. Dynamic. <laughs> who, who the fuck made uh, the uh, PS2? Guardians uh, of the Galaxy. Teen oh. Titans fighting game? Yeah, I was going to say the Teen Titans fighting game. Yeah, who did make that? Ravensoft? Are we talking about the one on CartoonNetwork.com? No, no there was a PS2, a PS2 oh. video game. It was pretty oh. good because I think... Is that the one that also was the, the Ink Arena Master? Brawler. Oh. I don't think because I know they made I don't a game think of that, that too. one. Yeah, that one was definitely after for okay. sure. In the fighting game, you could play as the Thunder Brothers too, right? I, I feel like so. I remember them. Are yeah. they Thunder or are you talking? Well, about it's the Thunder clones? and Lightning. The the Blue Brother and the Yellow Brother who are like the the gods of lightning. Aren't they the like gods mm-hmm. of... aren't their skin like pale white? Well, one's one's yellow and one's blue. I think. Uh, but yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. I think they were in it because they were at the time the only people that <clears throat> mattered. True. <laughs> yeah, no, I I think they could do a good good thing with that. Yeah. DC's characters, uh, sadly, are not that interesting. Yeah, you, I'm sorry, DC, but you are white bread. Yeah. Noah nailed it. He's just, Batman's fantastic. Like he's as good as any other best superhero for yeah. sure. So I would love they can. Um, fuck the dude that made uh, Omicron, David Cage. What's that? What's his company called? Quantic Dream. He can do a good Superman game, where it's just all choices. You don't have to like actually you do never gameplay. Play as Superman, you just play as Clark Kent. Yeah. No, I think you could play as Lex Luthor as long as as well as Clark and um, what's what's uh his love interest name? Lois Lane. Lois Lane. I think you can make an interesting story between all three of them. Where you can switch off. Yeah, but then you'd have to deal with the weird rape scene with Lois Lane, and I'm not really feeling you know, that. <laughs> you don't have to do that. No, he does because it's in every game. You don't I have like to do if that. we're doing like a VN type game, it'd still be Batman would be better. Yeah, just because you can go like the detective route and have him like actually figure out stuff. What's VN mean? Visual novel. Think like Walking Dead. The they game. did that. Yeah, yeah they, they did tell. do that for yeah. for Batman. Right. But yeah, like, it was fun. I played it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember you actually really liked it. Yeah, it was much better than I thought it was going to be. Mm. It was That's super the one interesting. Where, like the Joker is a character, and like he kind of develops to the Joker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. He Depending uses, on your ending. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. your choices matter. <sighs> it's Telltale Games. Your choices don't matter. They matter. They don't matter. You get different endings. They don't matter. <laughs> Joker will remember that. Riddler will remember that. It says so in the upper left of the screen. You tell me they're lying. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, so what do you think the reason is that movie games have kind of disappeared i think it's because it's easier to make a mobile version of whatever the movie game is or like mm-hmm. something that makes actual money 
True. Than it would be to waste time on development of a shitty game that no one will buy. Yeah, I miss that though. Yeah, I like playing shitty games nobody buys. Yeah, do you want to? Do you want to do a full playthrough of, of uh, Aquaman, Iron no. Man? I was gonna say of Shark <laughs> Fest, whatever that fucking uh, Shark Tale. Yeah, Shark Fest. <laughs> Shark Fest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Shark Tale. That's, I don't know. I think who's, people. Who's fu- the main actor in that? Will Smith. That's what so I thought. I was gonna say Will Smith. I but think I, I felt like I was gonna be racist towards a fish. I think people finally just understood the movie game sucked. That's the reason I didn't buy Wolver- the Wolverine game because I was under an assumption when it first yeah. came out. I was like, it's a movie game. Yeah, but like. But it, it turned out to be good. But I was burned so badly so many times <laughs> that I want to play shitty games again. Yeah, I want to play the Shrek game again and not have to pay sixty dollars for a shitty game. <laughs> The game is dog shit. Yeah, it is. <laughs> don't don't worry, no, they're still making shitty games. <laughs> yeah, but like <laughs> they're making shitty games like they're not shitty er- enough, like earnestly. Yeah. Like they don't want it to be shitty. <laughs> yeah, like we- there's a difference between just like a what, game that they push out game? to be shit to cop money versus like somebody put time and effort into game they and wanted to make to and it was shit. bad. What was that EA That's Bioware just depressing game? Depressing to play. Advent. Rising? No, the one with uh when you play as like Iron Man and uh all the false promises. What the fuck are you talking you, you, about? You play as like a uh, Iron Man. Uh you play as, you play as like it's like a mech suit and uh Bioware made it. Oh uh Dark Void? Fuck. No, no, it was it came out a couple years ago and everybody was all hyped over fuck. it about it, but it was all lies and it didn't last. Uh, you, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Uh, I played it. Anthem. 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 Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Anthem. Yeah. Yeah, you can play Anthem. I have played Anthem. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't buy it. Uh, when it came out, there was like a subscription thing. It was like ten bucks a month, and you can play. Please games play our game. Origin. Yeah, that sounds about right. And Anthem was on it the day it came out, so I was like, I guess I'll pay ten dollars to play Anthem for a month, and then after like a week, I was like, all right, pretty much seen everything. Yep. I remember that people were finally having fun with the game because you could bug it and get two suits powers at yeah, once. And then they patched it. Patched it. <laughs> and then they made the grind harder. And then they also And then they killed the game because yep. nobody was playing it. They exactly. I wonder if it's because they patched stuff out that was fun. Mm-hmm. But it was breaking the game. We don't give a fuck about your economy. Your game sucks. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, like I would play that game if it were good. Like it has so <laughs> much potential. Oh yeah. If if like, it if they cooked that they, idea is gold. If they cooked it for like two more years, it would have been great. Yeah. yeah. But it's EA. Yeah. And if it wasn't it's supposed to be a dumb MMO looter shooter. Bobby wanted his money. His Mr. Kotick needs his money. He needs another C-A- super EA yacht. or is he Activision? He's Activision. Activision. But you said Bobby, so yeah. I wanted to. <laughs> That's who I meant. Yeah. But <laughs> Is there a single is there a single Bobby Never. in the industry that is good? Because Bobby Kotick no, sucks, and then Rand. Oh, I've well, that's to, I've yet to see one. I was gonna say Randy Pitchford, but Randy does not shrink. I thought it was Robert Pitchford. Uh, <laughs> that's the guy from Gearbox who stole all the money. Oh, uh, the chop horn dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they found a he, he dropped a flash drive and had <laughs> kitty porn on it allegedly. Got to say that for the, the people listening to this, <laughs> so we don't get sued. Yeah, exactly. He's he's doing pretty rough these days. He'd probably sue us for some cash. Oh, I thought uh, for me, I don't have money. I thought yeah, Borderlands Three came was did what super well. It did fine, but most people bought it on sale, hmm. and nobody really cares because whatever, right? Most of their games aren't great. Yeah. <sighs> so. I started playing Death Stranding mm-hmm. this week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Noah gave it to me at the beginning of the pandemic. And I just started playing it. <clears throat> Death Stranding is a super unique game. Mm-hmm. I've never played anything like it before. The what? mechanics are f- super hard to grasp. Yeah. What do you mean? Meaning, like, I've been playing it for eight hours. If I was playing any other random game for eight hours, I would understand it completely. I would sure. understand what they want me to do. I still don't understand Death Stranding of, like, the mechanics of, like, sneaking and, like, how to fight the monsters or even how to spot the monsters. Like, you coat them in piss. 
Huh? You coat the monsters in piss. And but you can't even them, see them, James. So that, you, I understand them, you. But then when you've got them pissed and royally pissed, then you hit them with the shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's just a super interesting game because the mechanics are not like any other game I played. Mm-hmm. You know, I play... I play Resident Evil. I know what I'm doing in RE8. Yeah. I play um, Neo. I know how to, like, I know what they want me to do. Okay. You know? I know, like, just don't get hit and kill the monster. I get that. But Death Stranding, you're a fucking glorified delivery man. Mm-hmm. You're and Philip J. Fry. And you, and you run away from invisible monsters, and you have a baby strapped to you. And you got to manage your 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 weight and and how you move. And your balance. Yeah, yeah. and your balance. And your sounds bar. like dog shit, but Kojima found a way to make it fun. I made a delivery last night that was way too heavy for me. And I delivered everything at once. And the sense of pride was was so huge that, like, I don't... It was like the equivalent of being a Dark Souls boss. I was just like, I fucking did it. Yeah. I was not supposed to deliver that much. Like the, <laughs> the my I was uh my weight limit was like at 120 percent. So I was I was moving super slow. But um, Kojima found a way to make it fun. And I guess my question is, is Kojima really a genius? Because I always felt like when people would like suck off Kojima, yeah, it's like. Eh. He's fine. He doesn't deserve all the sucking off. But he made a, a fucking game about being a UPS man fun. Well, and that's not easy. Here's the thing. He didn't. At all. He doesn't do any game development. What do you mean? He's a writer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was <laughs> but gonna he never say, stands in it, though. I was going to yeah. say, I think his like, strength is that he can like take a subject and like elaborate the shit out of it. Yeah. In just odd ways that just like comes together exactly which is still but i'll say that he he does i i I feel like that's giving him too much credit when his team deserves significantly more is what i'm saying like sure (laughs) but like i don't know i still feel like he because he designed like the gameplay did he like the strand type gameplay i'm pretty sure that was like his idea like definitely like he collaborated with a bunch of people that helped but, like, the community aspect of a video game, I'm pretty sure that was, like, his idea. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. He, the game is just, like, very unique. Mm-hmm. One of the most unique games. And, like, there's a lot of, like, Metal Gear-style talking in there where yeah. you get three calls in a row of people just telling you shit. Yeah, and it's like, here's the here's the info dump. Yeah, and it's it's... I'm used to it because I've had years of Metal Gear under my belt, but I don't know. I, I, I honestly think it's super impressive of how he made this game fun. Because I, any other game, I would hear, oh yeah, you just keep running around and you deliver shit and you don't really do much else. Sounds terrible. Yeah. Like I, I would not be into those games, but he f- somehow made me made it fun for me. You know, some people may be into those games, mm-hmm. but from what I'm, what I'm seeing with Death Stranding, a lot of like p- people, experienced gamers, like Death Stranding just because it is something different, mm-hmm. which is also something hard to do in mm-hmm. a game industry. Yeah. Also, I guess here's the thing too. Sorry, my headphones are fucking being weird. So you say that you wouldn't ordinarily like those games, but you like this one because he made it fun. Yeah. But if you haven't played those games, you don't actually know if you wouldn't like them. You just always figured you didn't. I mean, I never played anything like it. I mean, what what other game is like Death Stranding? Well, I don't know. I'm just saying that, like, you know, like delivery games or whatever, you know, like, because that's what you said. Like a game yeah. that's just that. Like, fucking what game, Viscera Cleanup Detail is way more fun than it should be. Right, and that's basic as fuck, and all you do is clean well, up. That, that scratches like an like itch that kind of everybody has, though. Yeah, of like wanting to make something clean, yeah, yeah. but not having to break your own muscles to do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think that's like that. I get the same vibe from Death Stranding as that game, right? Where it has mm-hmm. that vibe of like you feel good because you did the thing, 
and like it's a basic thing but because it's a video game and because it's whatever it gets that like unique vibe mm. granted i still haven't played death stranding it might feel completely different after i get my hands on it you know i just haven't done it yet it's i, I like it, it involves a like true frustration emotion at me which like only games like souls games really do mm. I have my packages, I'm delivering, and then the fucking monsters come. They suck me under, and all my packages fall on the floor. Yeah. And I literally screamed out, fuck, because I was <laughs> mad. Because I cared that much about these packages that I took, because I had to fucking walk up this hill, and it was high winds up this fucking hill, mm-hmm. and then when I get to the fucking area, they, they come, and I don't, under- I don't understand how to avoid them still. Yeah. I don't understand the mechanics of how to avoid them. I got to ask Dan. But I thought I was doing right, and I wasn't doing right. And it's the the challenge of, like, I don't understand these mechanics, which is fun as well, because it's a brand new, like, way to hide which from shit. Because, like, any, any most, most games where I have to do stuff, I understand how to do stuff. Yeah. I understand, oh, he saw me because I was being stupid. I don't know why they saw me. I thought I was doing something right, and I wasn't doing something right. Well, do you have that thing... That's from the trailers. Yeah. Like, Where you okay. pulse out to be yeah. able to see the VTs. Mm. Yeah. And I was doing I was doing what I think I was supposed to be doing, but I still fucking got caught. It's, it's, it's very interesting that, like, he was able to do something new like this. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I got to give Kojima credit, man. I, and I don't know, like, Metal Gear is a good game. Metal Gear is, is a good series. Yeah. People overhype it, yes. Yeah, it was good for its time and came out at the right right time, and it's it's fine. But is Kojima really on to some shit right now? Where he is really doing some shit, a lot of people are not doing. Maybe it's also a thing though of like you got to look at everything he's made to ask that, and not just his hits. Yeah, because like Police Knots or Snatcher, where you. You literally have a scene where you shoot better than the girl and you can shake her tits. <laughs> Good job, Kojima. Those young, those, those young Kojima. I those young Kojima. Those, 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 Kojima. <laughs> those young Kojima. But at the same time, like he's also the dude who you're right. He made Metal Gear Solid One. He made fucking Lego sets of the areas because he knew how he wanted them to feel. You know? Like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Have you not seen those? No. They're amazing. He actually, like, had Lego sets of the different rooms, and he's like, I kind of want the camera to feel here, and he'd have the Lego guy, and he's like, I want it to be here to, like, show Snake whatever. He's, like, an amazing director, for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, Kojima's like, definitely one of the best directors in game. Absolutely. Right now. Like, he, he knows how to direct a game. Look at yeah. PT. It's a fucking demo, yeah. and it has the, the best feeling of a Silent Hill game in the yeah. last 20 years. And you know? people can't shut up about it. Yep. That's and not to, like, say anything bad, but just, like, how good... Like a thirty-minute demo he made, exactly. Like reinvigorated that franchise. Yeah, I guess I, I was fighting it so hard, calling him a genius that I, I hate when people like attribute things to one person, mm-hmm. especially on a group thing like that. Because mm-hmm. like I'm sure there's a whole lot more behind the scenes than just saying like Kojima did it. Yeah, totally. totally. Yeah, and I know that's not. But what he's you're saying. definitely not like Steve Jobs, exactly. where he's like. I want this in my pocket. Figure it out, dummy. Later, bye. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Zona Enders, we we played that, and there's something special about that game. It was it wasn't one of his hits, but Zona the Enders, Kojima. Yeah. No. But like yeah, it's the Kojima and uh, all the art design is by Yoji Shinkawa, mm-hmm. the dude that does all the mech. He did Metal Gear stuff art too. for Death Stranding too. Yep. He also did it for that Left Alive game or whatever, which is the weird armored core. We don't, mm. have, to talk, we don't have to worry about it. It's bad. <laughs> but it's, it's something special about Zone of Enders where it doesn't feel like a regular PS2 run in the mill, like just on rail shooter, I guess. Yeah. Because when you think about it. Is it, it technically on rail shooter? No. I, I'd say it's, it's, it's more like a character action game. Yeah. But you can move in three dimensions, like a full free three-dimensional mm-hmm. movement you know because it's all about like ma- like you have a melee attack you have a gun attack, well yeah it doesn't special, it know? doesn't feel like a a regular ps2 character action game it's just something about it yeah and uh, uh, kojima's was fucking good man mm-hmm. and i i kind of lost hope i forgot about how good he was then i started playing death stranding and the story is fucking ridiculous it's 
is crazy. And I don't understand how he got Sony to put so much money into this game that probably did not sell the way they were expecting it to sell. Well, at the same time, though, it probably sold well enough because it's got the PC version and the PS5 version. Mm. And you got you and Dan talking about it, like, you guys are jerking it off so hard. I kind of been thinking about getting the PS5 version just to, as my excuse to play sure. it. Because I've always wanted to play it. I just haven't. You know what I mean? It's a weird game, man. It's, it's super fucking weird. I don't... That, it, there's two things that sold me. You know how you're saying that you don't know some things that happen? Yeah. Which is cool. Dan sent me a picture of him just working on well, like uh, one of the trucks that he had, right? Uh-huh. And in the distance on a bridge that was created, I just see these black particles in the air above a spot. And I'm like, what's going on over there, Dan? And he's like, oh, yeah, don't worry about that. And I'm like, I'm worrying about that, Dan. <laughs> oh, is this oh, like story-based? Maybe. Or it could just be something that's happening in the area, which is why he's fixing his truck, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, the fuck is that? Uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> I am. I am worrying about it. That's not normal in the sky. I know this. But it's also like, can you imagine the fucking meeting room of him going to Sony and saying, I want to make a game for you, Sony. Sony's fucking hard already. Yep. And then he says, it's a game about delivering things and building. Sony, if that was any regular uh, like developer, that was only be like, it needs to be an action game or a shooter. Yep. You know, we're not going to put hundreds of millions of dollars into a delivery game. What weapons do you use? Ah, you use your piss and shit that you pee and you shit <laughs> inside the base. <laughs> which is, which is like, everyone makes fun of that. It did, but in the story, it kind of makes sense. Oh yeah, you can totally make it make sense. But it, it is stupid. It, it is it is stupid. But like, I, I finally got to the part where they start making my my piss grenades and yeah. shit grenades. And I'm like, okay, I understand why. Oh, yeah. I don't understand how to use them yet, but the I understand why they work. There, and that's yeah. what matters. It's like because because it, you can do some real bullshit, but if you make it understandable, I'll accept it. You know, it's it's. What, how many mangas have we read like that? You know, where it's like, that's nah, bullshit, but I believe it. JoJo you know? is, a, is a, a manga based off it. <laughs> yeah. It's just still been going for over 30 years. Yeah, it is. <laughs> they even have a line on, on, in there in uh, part five where he says that's bullshit, but I believe it. Yep. It's, uh, it's the, I think it's for the jellyfish Yeah, when you sift the piss. Yeah. But, but Kojima's, after this game, I gotta, I gotta finish it and see where it goes. Mm. Mm-hmm. But he, he's he's, I feel bad because I I kind of underestimated him over the years because the last game of his I played was five, Metal Gear Five, yeah, yeah. and Metal Gear Five is a has kind of asterisk because it wasn't a complete game, yep. and I don't know if he wouldn't if he, I don't know if he left saying fuck you motherfuckers I'm gonna fuck this game up on purpose or not. Yeah. <laughs> so. Or if he read the wall, like signs on the walls, and he just went autopilot. Time to clock out. You know, yeah. like. Because <laughs> MGS Five is still some of the best gameplay I've ever played. Which is game. super interesting because, like Noah was saying, he has to be in there. He has to have he has to have some involvement in gameplay because all his games gameplay are are unique. Yeah. Like all the MGS games. It's it's fun, it's fun going up against a wall and just knocking. Yeah, <laughs> having having a motherfucker come over, and um, Zone of the Enders, like I said, that's also super fun. I've never played a game. I, I Zone of the Enders is a game I'm never gonna get that itch scratched. I've bought like seven mech games that are like space mech games mm-hmm. like that on Steam. Yeah, none of them even come close to feeling as good as Zone of the Enders, and it's just like, <sighs> <laughs> yeah. So and. And like they they really in, th- in Death Stranding, they really make the climbing real feel realistic of how he goes up these hills and these mm-hmm. these little bumps and shit and how the weight is. They put a lot of work into that shit. Yeah. And when you start to stumble, you feel it. You have that yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, good job, Kojima, dude. I, I think he's most definitely one of one of the greats, man. Up there with uh, Cliffy B. <laughs> well, hopefully, at least stop and pop system, baby. Hopefully, at least you know, paid his employees on like <laughs> I'm so interested to see what Kojima uh, Productions does next. He's working on a new game. 
I, I don't know if it, I don't want it to be Death Stranding too. I think this is good where it is. I don't need, I don't know if I need a sequel. I believe Death Stranding ends. Yeah. Yeah. Good. But uh, but let's let's see let's see what else you got, dude. Give us another horror game. I don't know how he fucking convinced Sony to put this much money into it. This game looks amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This game looks and feels amazing. It was, and it apparently looks better on PS5. Oh, yeah. Apparently. I can it, it had to be so expensive to make. Yeah. I kind of wonder what his budget was, though. I'm very curious what the fuck the budget was. These these maps are huge, and these, these cutscenes are incredible looking and very long. So... But yeah, I, I I just wanted to discuss Kojima and get your guys' opinion of do you think he's a genius? Yeah, I I think so. James? As much as a genius as somebody can be, I guess. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's a genius that needs somebody to rein him in, but I think that's most geniuses. Mm. That totally. makes sense. No. Because, like, look at Metal Gear Solid 4, right? That story is dog shit. No one can tell me it's not. For... Guns of the Patriots. Guns of the Patriots. Yes, okay, yeah, yeah. That story is dog shit. Yeah, it's it ridiculous. It wraps up every loose end, but some of them are like, man, shut the fuck up. You know, I mean, like... yeah, Ryan stops a uh, <laughs> legit, like, tanker ship with his... Chest, basically. Yeah. I don't think he has arms at that point. Yeah. <laughs> but you, your dick was Spoilers hard. Spoilers if you didn't play four. I don't I know did. if you have. But your dick was super hard when you hopped in Rex and fought Ray. Yeah, right? <laughs> and, like, that, that fight at the top... Between yeah. liquid and snake, and yeah. it goes through the bullshit. It's dope, amazing. Yeah, but like at the same time, it's like, dude, this story is nonsense. Yeah. You're a jackass. <laughs> like, but I don't know how. Like you said, I don't know how. Like, I, I'm not going to attribute it all the negatives to one man if I'm not going to attribute it all the positives to one man. Mm. You know, I I'm going to split the difference and be like, there's some bad shit there, and that was the only game that he wasn't co like director on or whatever mm. so you can get some vibes that maybe he didn't have a wrangler on that game <laughs> but who knows um but yeah no I, i'd agree definitely a genius yeah um, any can't... man who makes a fucking who tells his employees to make an algorithm that makes ice cubes melt at different speeds based on whether or not they are near more ice cubes it, it, <laughs> you, 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 they're they're a genius. I'm sorry. <laughs> Insane, probably, but genius. <laughs> On the PS2, no less. Like, why mm. would you? <laughs> yeah, there, I remember you told me that, that he, some shit about Metal Gear Two that I still like didn't know. Yeah, happened. It's fucking madness, dude. Yeah, that game is madness. So, and, yeah. Kojima makes good games. He makes fun games, which is all that fucking matters. Goddamn right. I feel very. I don't. I don't know how I'm gonna feel out hour forty, yeah. delivering packages and doing shit. But I felt really good last night delivering pack. I, I had to like tell myself to go to bed last night yeah. because I was having fun just doing side quests, which makes yeah. no sense to me. Like I understand doing side quests in JRPG where I'm fighting stuff and watching my numbers go up, mm. but I'm not fighting anything. I'm just running around. I got, I got a motorcycle now. You're making friends. Motorcycle's busted. Yeah. It's yeah. really good. Your motorcycle's really good. Did you take Noah's advice? You playing on easy? Not yet. No. Yeah. I want to understand the mechanics first before I just go straight to yeah. easy. I think Dan played it on very hard like I did. Oh, yeah? But, uh, yeah, I don't think there's any point to. Yeah. So normal is a fine thing to yeah. play it on, then. Okay. Yeah. Good old Kojima. To see what you do next. Yeah. I'm just glad that he literally took his ball and went home. Oh, you don't want to join up with Guillermo del Toro and Norman Reedus to make my horror game? I'll just go make my own game with blackjack and hookers. You know, he went full bender. <laughs> Dude, that game could have been fucking incredible, especially me playing me playing Silent Hill now. Yeah. Yeah, dude, the love they put into this game, now imagine Kojima love. And it would have been a Fox engine. Yep. Yes, it would have. Well, now he's got his Lumens engine, which seems just as good. Is or Ludens. Luden. Yeah. yeah, that engine is, is pretty crazy from the shit I'm, I'm doing and seeing. Hell yeah. Well, now I know what to get you for your birthday next year. The Ludens figure. 
Ludens? Ludin. Ludin. Yeah, it's, it's the, the astronaut, astronaut uh, mascot he has for Kojima Productions. Oh, uh, okay. I'm, I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> you said the Ludens in- engine, but I, I like, I thought Guerrilla Games made this engine. So I was like, are you going to get me a Horizon Zero Dawn <laughs> figure? <laughs> I haven't played it yet, but I want to. Yeah, enjoy Aloy. <laughs> Have fun. Is that her name? Yeah. Uh-oh. She's also in Genshin Impact because... Crossovers are hot right now. Yeah. Very. Yes, they are. Are you going to play Monster Hunter Rise on PC? Probably not. No? Just... Yeah, I'll probably wait for the next one. I don't think it's, like, different enough from, like, World for me to pick up. That's mm. fair. I feel like Monster Hunter is kind of one of those games where you can hit him up like a sports game. Yeah. Get him on the off years. Yeah, they don't... off releases. It's weird. It's like they change stuff, but like it's like very slow. But no, you get dog QOL updates. You get to ride on dog. Yeah. I don't know if you know this or not. But like you could already kind of mount creatures in world. But it's your dog. Yeah, but it's your dog. Yeah, mounting creatures you could do in fucking four U or whatever for the three DS. Mm. Yeah. But you also no. have the the whip, the bug whip. Mm. Clutch claw and all that kind of stuff. I don't know. Monster Hunter people. It's, it's they a, they say it's enough of a difference. I'm not a Monster Hunter person anymore. Yeah. So as long hey, the community's happy, I'm sure it's great. So, I just you know, playing world with my friend occasionally. Yeah. So I don't have much of a we need to get a new one. I feel you. I don't have the time to play Monster Hunter, especially yeah. with Valorant and Valorant. Planet. I think on my current character that I'm playing with my friend, I have like 200 hours, and we're not even like done. Yeah, I was gonna say, are you even G rank yet? Like we're like <laughs> doing, G-rank we're hunts. doing like the like, I think it's master rank. Got it. Which is like the highest uh, in the game, but like we're not even at like the last master rank. As yeah, Monster Hunter, I love yeah. grind in games, but that grind just fucking rubs yeah. me the wrong way. It can get pretty infuriating when you like run a guy like 20 times and still don't get a gem need that skill yep to make that fucking boner sword you yeah. need it. <laughs> just to get rid of it In what yeah, yeah. <laughs> like three monster hunts later you're like fuck I need another one <laughs> it's good shit though yeah it works it was, people love it I'll never hate on monster hunter mm. I'll just hate on the people that ruined monster hunter with me the only thing I don't like about Monster Hunter is that, like, it just feels sluggish. Yeah. Which is why I use the Insect Glaive. It's, like, one of the more quick weapons. Because you at least get mobility. Yeah. But, like, using the Insect Glaive kind of sucks because your damage numbers aren't high. Yeah. My friend uses, like, a great sword. He's like, oh, I hit for, like, 1,500. And, like, my max hit is, like, 103 at, like, an end of a combo. Like, it's a bunch of small hits, so they add up, and, like, his 1500 isn't something that he hits all the time. Right. But it just feels like I'm doing, like, nickel and diming him when he's like, oh, I just did, like, 10% of his health. Yeah. That's why I, I always ran Charge Blade. Because mm. if I needed a sword and board, it is one. But yeah. Then... <laughs> My friend, he was saying that, like, the Charge Blade is just, like, a worse great sword. Yeah, it really is. Because, like, you have to learn. It, it's, like, harder to learn. There's, like, way more combos and stuff. And, like, the great sword just does. does more damage for less effort. Yeah. It's good. It was only good to, like, fucking, you could stun well, pretty much all mm. the monsters really easy with Charge Blade. Yeah. But it's not a good solo weapon, really. Mm. Because you need the prep time. <laughs> Guys ready for a biscuit hammer? Yeah, let's know I had something to talk about. Yeah. I was going to talk, say that I was like playing Frostpunk this last oh, week yeah? a few times. What's Frostpunk? It's like a survival base building game. It's really weird. It's fucking it's difficult, builder, right? dude. Too, a little bit? A city builder? Yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, but it, like the emphasis isn't so much on the city. It's more like maximizing your resources and the time that you're given to survive this is, is it top down dude uh have you played any like city builder games because that's what no. it is it no. is like top down but it's like the map is like a pit in the ice and then you build structures inside of that 
So you're trying to survive the winter? Yeah. So, like, I forgot exactly what happened, but, like, an ice age happened. So this last remnant of your people found a generator, and you're trying to, like, survive. And you find out, like, 20 days in or something. I think the scenario is, like, 30 days long. Uh, But, like, 20 days in, you're like, oh, shit, there's a storm coming. And, like, I saw, like, some gameplay of the end of it, and it's just, like... For an entire week, you can't fucking do anything. So if you don't stockpile the resources to survive a week with no income, you just lose. Sounds hard. It was very difficult. <laughs> like, my first game, like, I, I lost pretty quick. And then my second game, I was, like, pretty confident. Like, I had my food up. The heating was up. I had structures. Everybody was happy. I was getting resources. I was like, all right, this is cool. But, like, as the game goes on, everything just, I just, it got colder and colder. Like, it'll drop two notches cold, and then it'll go up one, and then down two, and then up one, or down three, and then up one. So, it just gets colder and colder, and you have to maximize your time by researching new things to get your heating, and, like, you need metal and coal to keep the generators running. And then if the generator shut down, then people get cold. And if they get sick because of the cold, then they can't work in your shop, so you earn less. And if you don't build medical tents, then the sick don't get healed. And now those sick people are taking, like, two rations instead of just one ration. So they're, like, <laughs> fucking over your economy completely. And you're just like, can I just... Can I just and it was, like... So it was, like, stressed a game. It, dude, it, it was... <laughs> <laughs> it sucked so bad because I was so confident in my second play because, like... I had my resources and everything and I wasn't paying t- attention to the heat. And then there's like an event that happens part way in where they're like, you're an asshole and we're going to defect. So that, so you have to like play against like a second faction that's happening inside of your city. That's gaining. Is there any way you people. can stop that? Yeah. You have to like, make new laws you have to make people happy you have to like, also you were not making your stuff. people happy and making well it new wasn't laws. just that it was like <laughs> nose on some straight uh, just straight dictator shit i said work yeah, fucker actually <laughs> one of the first law i passed was child labor <laughs> oh my, is that why you and dad talking about child <laughs> yeah, labor <laughs> yeah yeah well like Think about it from this standpoint, right? No wonder in Silent Hill he was like, of course I'd shoot the kid. <laughs> no, see, you, you need context because you would sign this bill too. Oh, I'm sure. Like, not, not just for the meme or whatever, but, like, the context is is that your group of people are the last humans, like, alive. And you have to, like, survive to continue the species. And if you have 15 children just taking food, like, they have to work. Like, they... Get like, on, Jimmy. like, <laughs> no childhood for you. Well, like, if they don't work, they die. Everybody <laughs> dies, right? Yeah. Like, I don't know. No, you're right. I know you like you can beat the game without like signing that law and shit, but like, Sorry. fifteen extra workers, dude. <laughs> that's no, very good. Are you going to get Robber Baron tattooed on your chest? Yeah, well, what's great is that... A lot of rich people have said the same words you said. (laughs) Yeah, but those rich people weren't talking about the end of our species. It was the end of their money. That's what they were talking about. There's no money involved in this. You know, it's just prolonging our species. Do you want to live or die? I will say child labor is okay. Jimmy's not picking up scrap during the war effort. He needs to get punished. <laughs> the fuck you doing in school? Get your ass to work. <laughs> yeah, but do you have to build schools? Uh, well, I guess no. not, since everyone's working. No, <laughs> there there aren't schools, but people will bitch. Like that's the first law I signed. People will bitch. Yeah, you'll you'll get fucking. <laughs> You'll get like a pop that says like children shouldn't be working; they should be learning. And and it's no one like, just hits the red X. Yeah. On the <laughs> <laughs> Look, they get there's two bars. It's hope and discontent. There's a, there's a little discontent that pops up when they're doing that, but like if you heat them, it just goes back down. So, <laughs> like, whatever, dude. <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll give you another uh, uh, state-mandated heating pad for your pocket. Shut yeah. the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so they, they like, uh, tried to rebel? Yeah. So, <laughs> when that happens, you can take two paths. So, like, there's a law book, and, like, every day or day and a half, you can sign a new law, which gives you, like, new buildings, structures. Uh, you can 
do 24 hour overtime you can change the operating hours for like an extra four hours of whatever but uh two other paths that you can pick pop up and one's like authoritative government and the other one's religion and i chose like fucking authoritative <laughs> so i've got like patrols and like, watch showers <laughs> everywhere <laughs> No one's having fun in your town. I was not having fun myself, dude. <laughs> but, yeah. What? What did you say? You had guard patrols and what showers? Watch towers. Watch towers. <laughs> My gas showers. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> excuse me? And then like, I put up a prison and stuff. <clears throat> a prison for what? For the fucking people who are trying to <laughs> rise up and kill me. Like, I'm trying to save our species, and they're like, no, we're going to kill you because we're going to die. I don't, so you I don't wasted know. materials building a prison? Like, wasted is a really heavy word. In this <laughs> I'm sorry, are we just gleaning over the fact that there are no schools but at least in one prison? <laughs> What do you mean? <laughs> Why is that funny? No learning allowed, but we'll shove you in jail if you go against me. Hey, that, that's on the game devs. That's not on me. We can't build schools. I know. It's just the concept, though, right? It's just fucking super hilarious. Would you build a school if you could build no, a school? <laughs> not, not unless it helped me save people. Like... What's the value of like teaching a kid two plus two when like they have to be in the coal mine to eat the fucking generator to keep us alive? Yeah, bronchitis. Please could tell. So, so what happened after you installed the prisons and started putting so, car patrols? So yeah, they just like kept getting madder and madder, and I wonder why. So like I put what. Well, like, the Watchtower helped people, because, like, at, at that point in the game, like, all the hope's gone. And, like, the, <laughs> and, and, and the discontent bar is, like, super high. And you have, like, two weeks or so to, like, manage that. But if you go deep enough into the authoritarian, like, tree, you can make it so where, like, your word is law and, like, hope isn't even a bar anymore. It's just oh max God. hope because they have to listen to you. <laughs> yeah, or unless they, get, or yeah. they don't, they get thrown in prison. Yeah, but, like, what mainly with the second faction that rises up, there's just, like, random events and stuff where they're like, oh, we don't want to work, and then you can either, like, say, like, whatever, I guess 10 oh, people so don't strike. work for the day, or I can tell the cops to beat the shit out of them. <laughs> Which one did you choose? No. Which one do you think I chose? <laughs> The species is ending there. These fucking ninnies have to go back into the coal mines. We got sawmills to run. Drills to get me my iron. I just like that Noah's walking the streets looking like fucking Scrooge McDuck and a little boy drops a block, like a block of coal and you pick yeah. it up and you're like, Jimmy, you gotta take this back in there and then you... And one of the soldiers <laughs> comes over. You're like, throw his parents in hey, jail. That'll learn. I will say, a kid did get injured on work. And How I let, injured? I let him have the day off. <laughs> just the day. How, yeah. how, how injured? Uh, just injured. You? Okay. Yeah. Uh, for he lost a, f a finger or two. It's just like a random event that. Back to work the next day. Children are clumsy. And whatever. Yeah. There's no schools, James. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite aware. <laughs> so, so what happened next? But, uh, I also need to say that uh, for sick people, you can be gravely injured, and if you're gravely injured, there's a chance that you can become an amputee. And once you're an amputee, you're useless. Yeah, yeah like, you, 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 you literally just eat food. Do you That's throw them in the, in the fucking furnace as well? I, if I could. <laughs> Honestly, I might have to bring that up to the council when I do my next run. But uh, so, what do you do? There's with this them? rent. They, they the, just uh, there's there's a law that you can pass that opens up uh, prosthetics if you build a factory. Huh. But like, so they can you can get to, back into the factory and work yeah. more and lose another yeah, hand. Yeah, yeah. But just Dude, like I, I literally <laughs> was screaming at my computer. I'm like, I need these fucking amputees like work. <laughs> 
No, but, uh, you need to stream when you do this because I want to watch dude, it's this hard. so bad. It's so I, I hard. I will totally watch that. <laughs> Especially when you're screaming, I need these amputees to work out. Dude, <laughs> the funniest part is, is that, so you research to get a beacon and once you build it, you can set out ca- s- scout teams to like find other survivors and find resources and stuff. And they like hit a camp and there are survivors coming towards us. Yeah. And as soon as they arrived, Instead of thinking, oh, I just saved these people, I was like, that's 50 more people I can put to work. (laughs) (laughs) Like, you know how much production I just made by just grounding these people up? Can the survivors see? The weight off of my shoulders (laughs) is like, I felt bad in the moment because I was like, holy shit. Can can the survivors see what your place is like and choose not to stay with you? Oh, they just automatically get oh, on board. Oh shit! Yeah, uh, I'll I'll say it later, but it's towards like the end of the run. Okay, so what happened next? Uh, I do remember this one event happened where I was like trying to build prosthetics, so I was like, all right. But uh, some dude Let's had gang cripples back to yeah, work. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but some dude had gangrene, and it was a choice for me. He was like, no, you can't touch it. Like, I'll become an amputee and useless. Or so it's either get an amputee or just let him die. So I like told him to cut off his leg or whatever. And a few days passed, and like I still don't have a factory up and running to make prosthetics. And then I got an event pop up that was like <laughs> this amputee killed himself because he couldn't help people. Wow. <laughs> wow. Honestly, good riddance. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Dude, he's eating food. <laughs> <laughs> How dare he eat food? Dude, he did it himself. He was like, I'm just eating rations. I'm not helping people. Like, I, I'm not gathering resources. I'm not helping yeah. the state. Darius. And he took his own life. No one didn't you know make what? him take his life. It was just Noah's guard that whispered the idea <laughs> into his ear after Noah snapped his fingers <laughs> twice, okay? He's, his conscience is clear. <laughs> Oh man! But <laughs> this game sounds so good to watch you play. The Baron it, is unhappy with you eating it's food. A, it's a lot slower. You gonna take another sounds. bagel? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure it's slow, mm. but I can just feel the building, like the the, the moment the explosion at the next event, right? Because mm. as I, I'll watch and I'll see that heat drop two more levels, and I'll yeah. go, "Oh, what's happening? It's <laughs> coming! It's coming!" There was like a definite point where I was just like super. I wasn't like overly confident but i was like yeah things are okay right now and then the rise up happened and that it was just like slowly like i was slowly being choked by this invisible force the the what happened uh the insurrection where like the faction was like oh uh, the re- revolution yeah pretty much <clears throat> and then you just you just felt the noose tighten yeah, around you like you could legit feel it cuz like <laughs> There was one point where I think the cold dropped three levels and on the timer where it shows like, oh, it's going to drop three levels on this day. It's going to go up one here. I couldn't see when the next heat rise was. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was not good. So <sighs> when the invisible noose got, yeah. went around your neck, the tangible so, yoke got tightened on your shitty little so <laughs> servants. Yeah, yeah. So, with the prison that went up, you can upgrade abilities into it where they'll just, like, round up people that were, like... Oh, my God. Oh, I also built a propaganda center. Of course. <laughs> of course, <laughs> Mr. Atreides. They, they rounded up, like, 10 or 15 people or something. And I had, like, engineers in there. And I think they either got sick because it was, like, too cold in the prison. but like Or too when, crowded. No. Uh, <laughs> no, he what, built what, a <laughs> It was a big when, prison. When that happens, like there's there are no guards in the prison, so I just left the prison. Oh wow! So it be, it so the guards left us fifteen to die. No, they got out. The guards oh, left because yeah. it was too cold. Yeah. Oh. oh. They got sick, so the people just like left the prison. <laughs> are we allowed to leave? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Can we leave? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude. So was that? Fuck. And then they. Did they start the revolution then? That it fucked everything? No, I ended up like winning out in the end. Uh, I think 
Yeah, once I like rose up and I, would, I like actually became a dictator where like hope was just like permanently maxed because yes. or like <laughs> whatever you could say it was like at rock bottom because I mean they didn't have a choice at that point. <laughs> a riot happened and a bunch of people died. <laughs> So well, hopefully they were one. amputees. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> dude, I would. Did you ever get dude. to the prosthetic factory? No. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I, I couldn't afford it. <laughs> because people weren't fucking working. <laughs> I built hospitals to try and help them. And, like, nothing worked. And I, I literally couldn't spend enough to get a factory. Because I had to manage everything else. Oh, my God, dude. So and, what happened in the end? Uh... Yeah, you said there was something that you were going to save to the end. Fuck. But... God damn it. <laughs> <coughs> what was happening? Did I say it already? Fuck. How many more days do you got till the storm comes? I don't think I made it to the storm. <laughs> yeah, it sounds Yeah, I definitely right. didn't make it. That game so fucking hard, dude. But you love God, it. God, I forgot. What was I going to say? God damn it. <laughs> Because I think it, I think we were either talking about the prison, or we were talking about an amputee. Yeah. Because you were about to tell us the oh, story yeah, yeah. of. So like at the end of the game, yeah. during like one of the last phases, uh, there's like three groups of survivors that just like come, and they progressively have like more sick people with them. Mm. So like the first group's like seventy people plus like twenty sick people. And you can either accept them all or just accept the healthy ones. And I was like, I'll accept them all. I got you. And then the second group came and it was like 40, 60. And I'm like, yeah, only the good ones. (laughs) I can't feed all of you. (laughs) And then, yeah, I ended up losing because discontent just got too high. Damn. And they murdered me. (laughs) Yeah, they publicly execute you if you lose. (laughs) God damn I it. bet Noah was up there. You'll see that I was right <laughs> in the end. <laughs> You'll know when the final bell tolls. <laughs> do they at least do it cool and like throw you into the fucking magma? Like, or I think they hung fucking... me. You can like, I think get like, you can like tie people to posts and shit or something at some point but you can give them the old shame shame tie yeah that shit's difficult well yeah they're struggling you can only really tie amputees because they can't fight back <laughs> yeah dude I, I, if you strewn out i almost definitely watch that dude, this sounds like aces that yeah. sounds so good I, feel like, I guess it was free on epic a while ago and i had it in my library but like this last week, it was like on eighty percent sale on Steam, and I forgot I had it on Epic, so I just bought it on Steam. Nice. Again. <laughs> oh man, the game's fun, but goddamn, it it honestly feels like like there's multiple ways you can win, but it, it I don't know. It's a struggle no matter what. It sounds yeah, like it feels like there's just like one route to like winning. Yeah, Are you gonna go with uh, religion next time, Paul. I don't know. I don't know if they deserve faith. <laughs> <laughs> Those poor kids. Yeah, they deserve prison kids. and no school. Worrying about the kids. <laughs> yeah, you're thinking too small, Darius. He's thinking about the race. <laughs> you want mankind to survive? You got to put those kids. You to play work. that game for five minutes and tell me you won't sign that child. <laughs> <laughs> when you realize you can have an entire other factory up and running. Yeah, dude. Children's <laughs> factory. Shit, dude. That's it. I'll load it up. Darius, get in here. You're gonna. <laughs> You're gonna learn today. <laughs> uh, so we hop it into biscuit. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Chapters eleven through twenty. Mm-hmm. I believe. How do how do the chapters start off? It's just it's just them hanging out, right? Uh, I've got my notes. But yeah, yeah, they uh, they start out uh, at home. Uh, uh, dad comes home. Oh yeah, the dad. Yeah. Don't need quotes there, silly. Yeah, so the dad comes home, and this is when. Uh, oh, 
what's his name? I almost said Han Getsu, but that's not it. Yeah, it is. Uh, Han Getz. He's like, oh, here's my card. And he gives the dad the Ally of Justice card. Yeah. And he's like, Ally of Justice. By mistake. <laughs> he's like, oh, I fucked up. And he's like, it's okay. It's funny. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, like, <laughs> eh, 10 out of 10. You're Gucci. <clears throat> um, I'm going to look this up on my phone so I don't have to keep looking back at the fucking whatever. All your notes. Yeah. I posted them on Discord because that's smart. Very smart. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, he, he, uh, the dad ends up liking him. <coughs> not, not that much really happens. It's mostly just like a lot of the kids hanging out, really. Yeah, this is also the chapter where, uh, Yuhi Han gets and the sister all go out and get drunk. Yeah, and she talks about her childhood because yep. her and um, her <clears throat> mom went to France <coughs> because the sister, which is the princess, was sick. Yep. And so the dad stayed in Japan. With the sister, yep, and um, <clears throat> the sister magically got better, mm-hmm. which we find out is because uh, of Princess Anima. Yeah, she gave her her power. Yep, and this is also uh, there's a there's a dope scene where Yuhi falls asleep in in school, and he wakes up in the dream world, and she's not there, and she's not there. So he's like, "How far does this bitch go?" And he just starts walking. And he finds out he's inside the hammer. Yeah, he's on top of the fucking hammer, and he's like, "What the." F- fuck does this mean yeah <laughs> what does that mean it, he's the, the dream world's on the hammer i guess why yeah it's a good question do you see the do you see the weird part about the notes when the dude talked about the door with the unicorn the dragon and the golden bird yep because there's a there's a unicorn there's there's four and, and there's a bird a, on a the door yeah no you're right there's three there's three i'm stupid no there's four are there four yeah oh, the yeah. door has four there's a unicorn on door there's a bird on door I it doesn't really look like a dragon, but it could be a dragon on the door. And then there's something else on the door, but it's not very clear. And I don't know what the fuck that means. Yeah, that I'm sure we'll learn. I think like, one of the chapters they like talked about it, like translator talked about it, but they only talked about like three of them. I think there's also another one later on, uh, another like line later on, because uh. I'll talk about when we get to it. It's when the the horse knight shows up, <clears throat> but he talks about it's when the he notices that the fucking like mountain got mm-hmm. crushed, crushed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you he drinks. He can drink like a fucking fish, apparently, even though he's never gone out drinking, yeah. and he out drinks all of them. And uh, Han gets gives him a toy of the anime they've been watching, and the first thing you he do is, does is like look at the underwear. Yeah, he's like, he's like that's surprisingly well made. Yeah, I was telling James. Uh... When I read that, I thought it was a, that was a interesting thing for the writer to write because it kind of just made him look like seem more human. Yep. Because like every boy does a dumb thing like that whenever they like get a doll in their hands. Yeah. And, you know. Because Han gets is even like, yeah, I did that too when I grabbed that shit. Yeah. And then he passes it to the sister, and the sister's like, "This is well made." And then she looks because she's like, "Okay, what the fuck?" Like you know. Mm. And Noi is kind of gives you he shit about it. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you, idiot? And when the toy's on the table, Noi kind of crawls over to it to look under. And Yuhi's like, well, <laughs> like, how'd it look? And he's like, oh, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then uh, they all get drunk. And Yuhi has to call the princess because he's like, I literally can't carry them both home. Yeah. This sucks. Um, and then the princess is like, damn, carrying her kind of is, is heavy. And he's like, I'd love to switch. And she's like, fuck you, you, he shut up. <laughs> he's just like, I want them boobs on my back. Yeah. And the dad was there the whole time. Yep. And he pretty much just like was filling both of them out. Yep. And he's like, Han gets is great. Yeah. But I don't fucking trust you. He, yeah. And you're like, ooh. And when she was saying all the bad shit about her dad, you could see like <laughs> a sword going through him like, oh, yeah. Cause she's like, yeah, he's a deadbeat. Like, yeah, he's always gone, and he's like, Ugh, making money. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, and then yeah, uh, chapter two is Han gets is drunk and hungover on Yuhi's floor, and Yuhi's trying to sleep, and then the princess rolls in, and that's when she talks about how the dad is an author, and Yuhi's like, I uh, I own all of his books. Yeah, and she's like, you're a fan, and he's kind of like, I guess so yeah yeah i like his books fuck leave me alone (laughs) uh and then uh the sister tells him that she needs he needs to take the princess out asahina 
on like a date basically yeah for the rest of the whole day yep because they're setting up her birthday pre- like birthday party um and so he's like oh this is a family sanctioned date dope and they go to a cafe and she eats him out of pocket and he's like this was a mistake i fucked up and then when she goes to the bathroom the dad's in the fucking booth behind him and he's just like da question number one bitch and he's just like ah, ah, what do i do and i think this one he's just like like are you dating my daughter and he's like not yet yet yeah what do you mean by yet and he's like it's just one-sided admiration right now it's don't worry about it it's fine because what she's 17 and he's 20 or some shit right now she's, or something like she's that. turning 16 he's yeah. 19 yeah that's so. what it is i think does he say 19 i thought he said 18 it doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah, matter. He, uh, and I don't know. College age. That's well, what I don't know the age of Kassin in Japan, but it's probably low. Yeah, it's probably. Low. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then he asks him, like, "Hey, what? Like, what do you want to do? What are your dreams and aspirations?" And you, he kind of drops the bomb that he's like, "I wanted to be a detective when I was a kid," and we all know why he doesn't want to now. Yeah. But like, the dad kind of is like, "It's not too late. Like, you can always follow your dreams, dude." And you're like. A fucking child still go for gold um and there's a nice little part where noi is kind of like oh shit like you he's opening up that's kind of cool like i always thought he was a scum fuck piece of shit but he here is, we go he is a scum fuck piece of shit 100 yeah. percent um but he's got a heart of gold maybe <laughs> um and then they they basically the dad's like okay i'm leaving and you he's like please come over and sign my books and he's like yeah okay <laughs> like you got me um, then they go to the birthday party, right? Yeah, and, and everyone just has fun. Yeah, even a dog dude's there. Yep, yep. Uh, but then, yeah, they go. Uh, there's like a really awkward, sad scene where the sisters talking about how, like, oh, you like it's your 16th birthday. You'll have many more birthdays after this. And the sisters kind of like, <laughs> yeah. And you're kind of like, oh, what the fuck's that all about? <laughs> yeah. And then she tells on the rooftop. She's like, yeah, I'm super sick. The only reason I'm healthy is because of the princess. The minute she disappears, I'm back to being, like, going to die. And that's her sick. motivation for destroying the world. Yep. Because she's like, if I can't live here on this planet that I love so much, then I might as well take it with me. Yeah. And you, he's like, sounds great. Which is, like, crazy bitch motivation, but also understandable dying teenager motivation as well. Right? Because, like, that's a scary thing to know you're on your way out at 16. Yeah. You know, that's a... Mm. And then if you suddenly find out you have the power to, to take it with you, why not? I've got a bunch of reasons why not, but why not? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I... Oh, there's a, there's a... There's a line on the roof, too, that I liked, which is she looks at him and she's like, die with me. And he's like, with pleasure. Yeah, he, like, he fucking is down bad. The simp is hard. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> It's also that he hates the world, which helps. Yeah. Um, I don't know why I wrote this for chapter 13. I just wrote cool daddy. <laughs> and, and like the next sentence is, is Han Getz talking about how your killer technique needs a name, which Darius is all over. I'm when trying you, to figure out why you wrote cool daddy, James. I don't know. I think it's because that we... I. It's fine. You don't got to look it up, but... But I want to know so bad. It has to be where her dad has been. Maybe because he signed the books. <laughs> Maybe. Or it's because... Uh, I think we... This is the chapter that we learn about um, Han Getz's his dad. Where? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Han Getz has a flashback. He's just talking about his dad. Yeah, his dad's not a clever man. <laughs> yeah, his dad like taught him how to fight. His dad says, you could do whatever you want to do, which is, you know if you try your hardest you'll be good and the yeah, next and, scene and, is well, him yeah, cause the kid's like dad my favorite superhero is Parrot Man can, how can I fly and the dad just kinda like looks off in the distance he's like wait with enough training <laughs> <laughs> the, the next panel is he'll jump it off the roof yeah. as a kid <laughs> And then it says my dad was not a clever man. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, in the, the, the next page is him fucking in the bed, crippled. Yep. <laughs> and then this is when he shouts with you, he, and then he's like, man cannot fly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's probably what you meant by cool with that. Probably, yeah. yeah. And we also learn that, like, that's the reason why he says he's not really an ally of justice. Or, like, he, why he quit being an ally of justice. Because he realized, he's like, yeah, I want to be an ally of justice, but I gave up for a good number of years because I realized that, like, you 
Man, <laughs> man can only do. They have limits. Exactly. Which is <clears throat> true. So. But then we also learn because uh, you he walks up to him and is like, "Train me, like I'm ready." And we learn that the real reason he stopped being a hero is because he used to have a dog named Noko. And there was a kid that was about to get hit by a car. And Noko ran forward and saved the kid, not him. Yeah, and died. And died horribly in his hands, by the way. There is so much blood out that dog's mouth when he's holding the dog. Yeah. And he's like, I, I failed my dog. I can't even save... I can't save my dog? What makes me think I can save a person? Yeah. You know? And you're like, damn, man. Like, I'll, take, I'll take that as uh, he didn't spring to save the kid. The yep. dog did first. Exactly. And that's why he was... He, he hesitated. Like, yeah. yeah. As Sekiro taught us, hesitation leads to defeat. Mm. <laughs> um, but then he... Uh, he also kind of is like... You and the princess are planning something. I know you are. I'm going to stop you. But that's why you have to be strong enough to beat me. And you, he's like, oh shit. And he's like, yeah, I had this dope dream, and it was weird. You beat the shit out of me in this dream. Yeah, he said, like, he was trying to go upstairs, and he stood in his way. Yep. And he was, like, too powerful for him. So he said, yeah, it was pretty much him saying, like, you, he, I know you're powerful. Yep. And it, like I think he says it again. He's like, "You will be stronger than me. You can fly super high." And it's like even more of that like big dick energy of like, "Dude, you good? Yeah. Like believe in yourself because you have no self confidence, but like you good." Um, and then there's a new fight in chapter fourteen, and like the so the spear things come up and they all know they're like, "Oh fuck, time time to roll." Is that real? Is that how it is? Because I, I just I just figured that was like just a visualization of them sensing something I happening. think it is yeah. I think it is a visual representation okay I mean I wouldn't be surprised if that shit really shoots out the ground they could only they can see it there's a big ass hammer in the sky oh yeah you know what you're right it might actually be a thing that happens too because yeah if, but if, they don't mention the swords they true. always say like it's killing intent yeah that's true I think too uh <laughs> the sword's really tiny near Yuhi on the first one because mm-hmm. it's so weak so I think you're right mm-hmm. uh <clears throat> but yeah, the golem is like a cool little golem this time with, with like a hands. bunch of arms, yeah. and like it's strong enough and smart <clears throat> enough to use those arms to deflect the full brunt of the princess's attack. And so like she goes to punch it, and it just like takes the energy and launches itself off, and they're all like, "Oh shit, oh shit!" The princess can't get this one. What do we do? Uh, split up. <laughs> yep. You, he's like, "Princess, you go that way. We'll stay here." And she's like, "Sounds great." And then you, he's like, yeah, they're after us, not her. So that's the best way to save her. Yep. And then the dog goes, that's not how it was last time. What does that mean? Exactly. <laughs> and you, he's like, the fuck? What do you, like, why does, why do they keep talking about last time? What is this shit? <laughs> and then, uh, this is also when uh, he says, You're, uh, you remind me of my brother because you guys are nothing alike. And you, he's like, what the fuck? What the fuck does that mean, asshole? <laughs> like, <laughs> how can I remind you of somebody that I have nothing in common with? Um, and then I wrote Cool Dream. Don't know why. Okay. Wrote Cool Dream. But I think I that was a dream when he says, I, I saw you walking upstairs. It might be. I think that was it. That was when he tells him that. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but the, then he fucking he saves you. He Yeah, the golem finds him. And Yuhi's, I guess, not paying enough attention. Is going for Yuhi. And yeah, he he takes a step <coughs> back because the the Han gets a standing still, and the golem is jumping around them. And Yuhi takes a step back and trips on a rock. And it's oh. like it's like Yuhi, like that one fucked up. I can kill him. And it goes after Yuhi, and fucking Han gets shoves him out of the way and goes to use his Hoten Geki, his like spear move. And he clips him. And he clips him. But he gets clipped a little bit better. I remember exactly. He says, my <coughs> my insides feel like mush. Yep. And he's like, he's still thinking about being a hero. And he's like, I've got to get up and laugh this off. Like a hero can't just go down like this. And then he just coughs up blood. And he's like, ooh, Ludo, it's time for my wish. Do it. And Ludo does the wish, turns to Yuhi and says, Yuhi. 
Beware the owl. I know, dude. And and he disappears. Because I didn't think he was dead. Yeah. I didn't think he was dead at all. I was like, oh, he's going to be fine. He just said his insides just hurt. Yep. And then when the dog disappeared, I was like, oh, he did. Yeah. <laughs> And then you get the super sad double panel of him meeting Noko, and he's like, Noko, I finally did it like you did. And then what's really happened is he's dead in front of Ludo. Mm. And I'm like, oh, I can't do this to my mans. (laughs) And then, yeah, uh, the princess shows up, punches the fuck out of it into the dirt. Yeah, because she sees that he died. Yep. And you can't really deflect a hit when you get punched into into the ground. Can we back up first? Yes. Right before the fight happened, uh, what's the, the cool guy's name? Hangets. Hangets. He fucking bought tickets to a to a, I think a movie or p- premiere or something. Yeah, or like a play. <coughs> yeah. To take the sister. To out. take the sister to. And she was she was she accepted, but she was like like oh we'll see what happens. She wasn't like too into it, but he was super excited. Which makes it even sadder. Yeah, and Asahina was like, oh, that's like an adult date. And she's like, oh, yeah, it kind of is. Uh. And, dude, when Darius was reading this, he turned to me and he was like, he didn't get to go on the date. And I was like, Damn. nah, man. <laughs> He's dead. Uh-huh. And then, yeah, so the princess collapses the mountainside. And then you get a news report that says everybody was okay except for 28-year-old Han Then you see a mysterious figure and a horse. <laughs> yep. Which I wonder who those are <laughs> when there's a big talking fucking horse. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the uh, Asahina is like super weak and she's in the dream world and she's like, I'm sorry I didn't go out running today. I just can't do it. And you, he's kind of like, yeah, that's fair. Like some shit went down. Yeah, and he stops going over for breakfast because he's like, it doesn't feel right. Yep. And he, he even talks to him, He's like, she hasn't said his name in days. Like she refuses to kind of. Except. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> he and Noi are watching the anime together. And they're like, oh, it's okay. Because the grandpa gets kidnapped in the anime. And they're like, somebody's going to save him. It's okay. And then he fucking kills himself with like a belt bomb. Yeah. And they're both like, oh. And just keep watching because they're like transfixed to it. Because they're like, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> um, so the sister shows up to Yuhi and drags him outside. And is like, how do you feel? And he's like, I'm fine. And she's like, you're not. Come over onto my shoulder and cry, dude. Like, you need to let it out. I might grope you. I might grope you. I'll accept it this one time. And he, like, lays his head on her chest, and it's a really sweet moment. And then he has the anime spark in his eyes and fucking gropes her. <laughs> and she, like, punches him into a bush. <laughs> and he's like, no, I'm I'm really sorry. <laughs> and she just laughs it off, and he laughs it off. And then she's fucking crying horribly. She's like, I'll laugh more for you and for, like, whatever, but Asahina... And for him, and I'll show you that being an adult is fun. It's like, fuck, dude, that's a <laughs> that's a real pain because she she tells him that she might have actually really liked Han Getz. Yeah, and it's like, oh, come on, I already felt bad about my man's. Don't make me feel even worse about my man's. You never got to go on the date. Never got to go on the date, dude. And then they rewatch the grandpa episode, like he and Noi, and he's like, "Didn't we watch this yesterday?" And he's like, "Yeah, we did." Shut up. Like clearly, I oh, need yeah, to watch it's, it. It's his anime. He gave him the anime to watch. Yep, I forget. <laughs> uh, and then, <coughs> fucking, they go outside and they're chilling in the rain. And you, he has a freak out moment where he's like, "It's my fault. I wished he was dead. Like I was wishing for this to happen." And Noi has to calm him down, being like, "Dude, that doesn't matter anymore. Like it's done. You need to fucking move on. I know it's hard, but, bruh." Yeah. And then the brother shows up with the fucking crow. crow. That crow hasn't talked yet. I'm no. very suspicious of that crow. You're so suspicious it, of It hasn't animal. talked. Yeah, some people are quiet. Every animal's talked. That crow hasn't talked. I don't like that at all. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's, it's dude's brother. Yep. And he shows up and he's like, hey, you want to fight me? And he's like, no. And he kind of has a freak out moment of like, what the fuck do you mean? No, this is where it should say like, to be continued and whatever else. It should be a big moment. And you just hit me with a robotic, no. He's like, fuck, dude, I even picked a really good day. And he like fucking runs away all upset. And you, he's like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> Which is like, just shows you that his brother's super weird. Like he's, he's like almost stuck in his own anime, you know? Yeah. Um, and then this is when the horse knight kind of shows up. And is like, I'm a horse knight. <laughs> <laughs> to, it's it's uh, to all three of them. Right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Because uh, the brother meets the princess and I think falls in love with her as well. He asks her out. Yeah, right there. And she doesn't know what to say. I think the chapter ends yep. with that. And then I think the next chapter begins with them being in the dream world. And Asahina's like, well, what do you think about him? And Yuhi's like, I want to punch him in the chest. Yeah. Well, what, what about not that? I want to kick him in the dick. What about not that? I want to slap him. And she's like, dude, Yuhi, knock it off. And it's, it's, I, I like that, too, because it's also like that, that teenage hesitation of asking someone out that you like. Because... Because he's waited so long, she's thinking about saying yes to him because she's like, why not? Yeah. And it's like, dude, you should have told her you liked her a long time ago. Now, because someone talks about friend zones. It might well, be the dad. I, I or, it, it might be the dad. It might be her friends. Yeah. Her high school friends. No, no. Someone talks to him about friend zones. Mm. I, I think it might be, it's either dad or, or the guy who died where they say like, I think it's dad when he's when, he, when he's talking when he's asking him about his future or stuff or like do you like my daughter because he says like you you won't be able to get out the friend zone. Yeah, he says something along the lines of like, did you know that ninety percent of relationships that start as friends don't ever exit being friends? Yeah. And you know, he's like, I I didn't know that. Yeah. Thanks though, you fucking asshole. <laughs> and so that hesitation of um, one and of not one like asking her out telling her they like is kind of fucking them right now. Yep. Because Cause she she doesn't. She doesn't say no. Yeah. She's but, just thinking about it. But it's weird because her true dream self isn't feeling it. Like, she she still has only eyes for Yuhi, but the dream self is different than the real self, yeah. you know? Because, like, they're almost more open with each other in the dream world, mm. and but they can't remember it, so it's fine. Um, so then you get a montage of, like, so the, the brother's name is Mikazuki. Mm-hmm. So Mikazuki eats Yuhi's food, and Yuhi has to eat an apple. Like going back, going to college, and then Mikazuki flirts with the girl who wants to be with Yuhi. Yeah, and she's like, "No, I've got somebody already. It's him." And he's like, "Oh, it's him. Do you want to have a threesome?" And her response is, "Why would you ask that in front of him or something?" Yeah, and Yuhi's it wasn't like, no. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and Yuhi in the background is like, "So it's fine to say it when I'm not around." Like, <laughs> <clears throat> and then they're in class, and like. The teacher's like, does anybody have any questions? And he's like, yeah, is that a wig? And the teacher's like, it is. And everybody laughs. And it just shows that Mikazuki is the opposite of fucking Yui. Yeah. He's just super likable, super outgoing, super chill to talk to when everybody likes him. But they kind of look like <clears throat> A little bit. Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, he doesn't even know that his big brother was a knight until Yui, like, blurts it out. <coughs> mm. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't realize talking so much today was going to ruin my voice like this. <laughs> <laughs> I talked for like four hours in Silent Hill. And, uh, and then he asks, like, oh, were you friends with my brother? And Yuhi says yes. And that, like, fucking shocks Noi. Noi's like, oh, shit. Yuhi did have a friend. He's not a monster after all. <laughs> he is. But at least he's kind of not a full monster. <laughs> Isn't that when he, when he punches him? Yeah, he's like, okay, take off your glasses. Let's play catch. And he punches him in the face. <laughs> and, yeah, and you, he's like, what the fuck was that for? Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, oh, it's catch. It's from my home country. And he's like, we're both Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> like, it is not called catch. <clears throat> and then he's like, oh, come on. Like, he does like a dumb, like, your mother has an extended navel or some shit, like trying to get him to punch him back. <laughs> yeah. And then he starts shit talking the princess. <clears throat> and that's when you he strikes him and he fucking he goes crazy because you he's like i i killed your brother he saved me and that's what did it and he just starts fucking laughing and he's like oh so my brother died saving you then he was swallowed by your fucking destiny it was fate for him to die if i beat you then i beat him like he goes fucking insane yeah. solid logic yeah a hundred percent i mean if 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 I beat the person who beat my brother, I'm stronger than my brother. Yeah. And then uh, <clears throat> that's when the princess throws him, and she's like, "Oh yay! Like my training wasn't worthless with him." And then she's like, "You he, you can no longer fight against other people. Like no more personal shit between knights." Yeah. And he's like, "You got it." And. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> doesn't it, doesn't the a going come in soon? Uh, yeah, kind of soon. I think it's, uh, 
It's in two chapters. Or no, this is when the horse knight comes right after that, right? When he finds them. Yeah. Cause, yeah, it's in the next chapter. Because uh, you can tell that Mikazuki treats life like a manga. Because he, like, clearly his whole thing of, like, your destiny beat his. And then saying that, like, I, I chose a good day to come meet you and talk bullshit with you. Which was the reigning Dane while he was in his suit. So that he could have a, like, cool fight. <clears throat> and this is where we find out that the princess has friends. Oh, this is, you're right. This is when the jealous dream happens. And this is when he says, I love you, princess. I was a chapter early. Oh. <clears throat> um, but yeah, the horse knight shows up and basically goes, I know everything about you fuckers. Because I'm an adult and I know what I'm doing. Yeah. And then he like looks back at them and goes, oh, you're all youngsters. I'm not sad about you having a youth or anything. And he like runs away crying. <laughs> well, he like, also tells him he's located the owl, the snake. Yep. Uh, is there, there's another one, the cat. Yeah. And there's like there's twelve knights in total, but and eleven. And he tells them that uh, eleven now. Yeah, because the, they tell him that the dog knight died. So he, he doesn't know where the the rest are, but yep. he knows that where the owl snake and uh cat, cat is. Yep. And then uh, that's when when they're at the mountain that she destroyed. That's when they say something. They're because the horse is like the princess. None of the golems, the mage, or the legendary knights have the power to do something like this. This is super different. Mm. And I think those symbols are for the legendary knights mm. on the door. <clears throat> okay. Because um, that's like the only thing that makes sense. Because it's the only thing we don't know yet. Yeah. So. Um, oh, yeah. And then she looks at him when they're alone, Asahina, to Yuhi. And she's like, you will fight ten to one. You will spare none of them. Yeah. She says, like, <laughs> when, when the final battle happens, we're going to beat the bad guy. And then we're going to instantly turn on them. And you're going to have to fight all of them. Yep. Are you ready? And he's like, of course. Yep. And he says it with his back to the sun, so he looks super fucking handsome. And, and she's like, you can't do that again. Yeah. And he, he also says, it says like, I have to get powerful now yep. because I'm going to have to, it's going to be such a disadvantage in a fight. Yep. Because fighting dude 10 to 1 and every single one of them has like a power like you, you're, you're shafted. Yeah. Especially you, you, he, you suck. <clears throat> uh, so chapter 18 is you he makes kind of a cool chart and it's just a nice little visual for the people where he like marks the like golems that he's fought and the powers of the people he knows and like whatever and mm-hmm. it's just like a super nice visual I'm not going to go over it all here <clears throat> and Mikazuki is constantly mad that he doesn't get any fight because he tried to fight the horse knight and the horse knight took off his shirt and then ran the fuck away <laughs> <laughs> and he's just at Yuhi's house eating his fucking cabbage. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, why are you eating? Why are you here? And why are you eating my cabbage? And he's, he's, like, just, he's just, it was in your fridge. Blowing off steam like they're friends. Yeah. <laughs> and like, that's why it's a thing of like, he's not necessarily a bad guy. It's just that he lives his life like a manga. Like he thinks he's the rival already. So he's like, I'll just hang out at my rival's house. And Yuhi's like, we're college students fuck off <laughs> like you're eating my food pay for yeah. that <clears throat> um and then ooh, jesus christ my notes are weird yeah so two golems show up two separate ones there's one with three eyes and one with four eyes and like the princess finds one and it runs away and then they go to fight the other one you he does and noise like what the fuck is your what, like what the fuck are you doing what's your plan and he's like well with enough gunpowder or whatever we can beat anything it doesn't even matter fuck this and you he kind of has a panic attack and he like picks up a rock again to do the th- same thing he did to that one that didn't work and noise like dude what the fuck is your problem like you are freaking the fuck out dude and the monster almost kicks the shit out of him yeah. Because of his panic attack. Yeah, the chains come back. <laughs> yeah. And then the snake knight shows up and hits it with a sword. Yeah. And it bounces off. And at this time, Mikazuki tries to fight the horse knight mid-golem fight. Yeah, they're on their way. And then he stops and was like, I want to fight you. I think he calls him master. Yeah. They know each other, I believe. I, I, I Maybe? Because the dude's like, I like you're weak. You're nothing like your brother. You're a piece of shit. He calls him like fight drunk. 
Because mm. he's like, you, you, fuck off, dude. Like, we have more important <laughs> shit to do, and you're just jerking off. And he beats his ass into a tree. Yeah, he uh, he kicks. <laughs> yeah. Which is super cool. Always badass. Anybody <laughs> who kicks instead of uses fist already has my respect. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then we start getting the cool thing that I like in these chapters, which is like uh, Yuhi and Mikazuki are next to each other panel-wise a lot. And it's to show what Sh- Hangetsu was saying when that they're really similar. And he got the vibe that they were similar, not from their looks or how they act, but who they are. Because both of them are at their lowest right now. And they're both like, we need to be better. Because, like, the dude wants to fight the horse knight, and you, he can't do shit. Yeah, those (laughs) chains are holding him back again. Yeah, he has hard PTSD. Because, like, uh, the snake knight takes him home and just, like, chills with him a bit. And the snake, Shea Moon... Is like, oh yeah, last time we died protecting you, Noi. And Noi's like, yeah, it didn't really do anything though, because I died immediately after. And the snake's like, okay, cool. Don't try to return the favor. This shit's above either of us, so don't even worry yeah, about it. Yeah, Noi's not trying to hear that though. No, Noi, <laughs> Noi's like, fuck that, you died protecting us. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Yuji has, Yuhi has hard PTSD, where he's like, shaking in the dark like a fucking boxer after a boxing match and there's just chains all over his vision yeah and then the monster that killed han gets shows up and like goes to punch him and he like physically reacts to it yeah i think it's just like the snake girl right trying so someone trying to touch him uh it's uh it's noi because noi jumps on his head and you he's like what are you doing and he's like don't worry about it like clearly trying to be like you need company dog (laughs) like you're having a fucking panic attack man uh and then the golems come back and you he runs out and yoyoi which is the snake knight hits him in the back of the head and tells him you're dead wait (laughs) yeah he's like fuck you you can't do shit and she also does her cool domain, which is she adds a, like, her domain Coil to her to sword. Coil to her sword, yeah. Like a snake. Yep, yeah. like a snake. And she calls it Flamberge, which is, that's the wavy sword of, like, German stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's super cool, because it's like, okay, yeah, I like that. Uh, <laughs> but once again, fucking Mikazuki shows up to fight the horse knight. Because, uh, oh yeah, the horse knight was like, you don't even know how to use your domain, you stupid prick. You're worthless. Fuck off. And now he shows up and he's like, I learned how to use my domain. And he's like, have you been up in these woods for a week? He's like, yeah. I'm ready to fight. (laughs) And he's got like five o'clock shadow. Like he's got a beard growing. (laughs) And uh, yeah, he has a moment where he's like, Noi, I need you to tell me what to do. Tell me you want my help. Because if you tell me you want my help, I'll do everything I can to help you. We're friends. And Noi's like, yeah, dude, save the snake knight. And he uses that strength to like break his chains yeah because i was talking with darius about this people need a reason to do things for themselves a lot Mm. you know like because it's harder to do something for yourself than it is to do something for someone else yeah and it just is and so you because you he tried to do that with the princess when he had to go home he was like order me to go home Mm. like i need your protection to be able to handle my grandfather who fucked me up and it's like, okay, that's in character for him, you know? <clears throat> and then the last chapter is... Oh, no. <laughs> you, he runs in and does a flying lariat on the golem. Yeah, it's so fucking dope. <laughs> and, uh, someone asked, someone, I think the snake lady says, did he just lariat it? Yeah. <laughs> and you, he screams out, come and get it, which is super out of character for him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's just great, because it's like, okay, he's just trying to man up. You gotta respect it. And uh, I'm pretty sure if you see the panel too, he and Mikazuki both say come and get it at the same time mm. to each other's enemy. So it's like, okay, maybe they, there's a little bit more going on there than, than what we thought. Um, but then we get a bunch of dual panels of him and Mikazuki fighting their respective opponents. Mikazuki being a cunt and Yuhi being a hero. And uh, the golem runs at Yuhi and he's able to flip it like Han gets. Because Han gets, like, taps his shoulder. Yeah. And we find out that the last thing he wished for was for Yuhi to gain his martial arts powers. And it's like, oh, my God. 
this dude's fucking thinking like fucking 12 steps ahead. <laughs> He's playing 4D chess and all these fuckers are playing checkers. Yeah. Like, god damn. Yuhi, not his brother, which is super interesting. Yeah, right? I guess the, like, because if you think about it, he probably thought his brother was fairly strong on his own, but he knew Yuhi was weak. Mm. So it's kind of a thing of like, right? Yeah. <clears throat> But yeah, so Mikazuki uses his domain to make a bunch of small domains, and he uses them to, like, jump around them in a dome around the kick guy, and, like, throw rocks into them to bounce off and, like, reflect at different angles, which is a super cool way to fight. Yeah, super interesting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then... I think the princess is following a golem as well. Exactly. Because she found a golem, and she's like, I'm not going to punch it, I just want to see where it goes. Um... And then while Yuhi is fighting the thing, it one golem arrives with the other golem. The bigger golem eats the smaller golem, and it Inca's turns arms. into yeah, and it turns into a golem with seven eyes, which I think, based on what we have seen now, we saw a golem with one, two, three, four, five, and seven. Mm. So we haven't seen the six-eyed golem, which is weird because it's like. Each one has had an increasing number of eyes. So it's like, what the fuck's that all about? Yeah, I never um, noticed that. Yeah, it's super weird. Um, but then the princess shows up and goes to punch it, and it starts fucking screaming, which is the first time a golem has had, like, emotions or uh, the ability to speak. Yeah. And then the princess still kicks its fucking ass, just punches it royally across the fucking giant mountain yeah you know excuse me you're good we all make mistakes <laughs> uh and then in his moment of like success uh the brother has his moment of success against the horse knight and you kind of see more parallels between them like getting stronger and being better uh and then noi tells the princess what the wish was jesus christ it's dark <laughs> what the uh what the wish was. The last wish. Yeah. And then uh, waifu number two or three or four, depending on how you want to call it, goes up and goes, no, you, he, you saved me. Good job. And like Han gets kind of shoves him again. And you hear his like line of like, ah, dude, a hero shouldn't cry in moments like these. Come on now. And he's like, ah, you're welcome. And you're like, ah, you, he's gotten stronger. Yeah. And even noise says like princess, you, he got stronger. It's like, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's dope. It's such a good scene. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I think dude. that's it, right? Yeah, that's that's the last chapter. That's yeah. twenty. I got big dicks for the series. Yeah, <sighs> shit's good. It's only gonna get better from here. There's only sixty chapters, so like it, it fucking it's it tells the off. story. Yeah. yeah, I can't wait to see what's going on with the Owl Knight. Yeah, I hope I hope he you he isn't stupid. <laughs> what? And Don't trust him? Yeah, <laughs> don't trust him. <laughs> don't trust that crow either. What? <laughs> it doesn't talk. I don't like that. Crows Why? can't talk though. Huh? <laughs> yeah, he was like, crows can't talk though. <laughs> so. But he just doesn't want to talk. Maybe he's shy. Yeah. Well, no, I'm sorry. Darius doesn't trust you because mm. humans talk, and you don't talk very much. So. That's fair. Uh, uh, not Damn, very much. Darius. The crow hasn't talked at all. <laughs> to you. <laughs> Crow's been around for like four chapters. Hasn't said one word. I don't trust that. Every other animal speaks all the time. Yeah. Well, some yeah. people are quiet. Mm-hmm. Some people are quiet. <clears throat> uh, yeah. You guys ready for end of question? Always. Sure. We can start next podcast with the ending question. Um. Who... If you were a superhero, what would your nemesis or your arch enemy be like? Ooh. <clears throat> That's a tough question. I feel like my enemy would have to be somebody like Lex Luthor. Bald and super evil and no. rich. <clears throat> Someone who isn't necessarily wrong. But they're they're going about things the wrong way, you know. Is Lex Luthor really going about things the wrong way? He's well, a he's an alien, James. He doesn't belong here. 
because <laughs> he's brown, Darius? I don't... He's not brown. And most of the things, he's, he's browner than most white people. Superman? Lex Luthor. No, I'm talking. I'm saying from the Lex Luthor standpoint. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I thought you were saying... Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's going about things the wrong way. He's committing crimes, Darius. <laughs> It was someone like super smart like that. Yeah, like somebody who has a good reason to want to stop me, but is kind of just a dumbass about it. Yeah. Or like, you know, because like Lex's whole thing is that he's like, yeah, he could just drop us a fucking drop of a hat. He could destroy the earth. I don't really like I would like that. to think his, his super villain would just be like Elon Musk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, where he calls a scuba diver a pedophile yeah. for no reason. <laughs> his heart was in the right place, but he went about it the wrong way. <laughs> Elon Musk or the Amazon dude. Bezos. Yeah, Bezos. Dude, Bezos looks like Lex. He does. Yeah. He does. <laughs> How about you, Noah? Shit, dude. I don't know. It's a tough question. Because you yeah. got to think about what's the opposite of you. Yeah. You know? Like, that's that's the scary part. Just loud and talkative. Popular. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Will Smith. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's who you just described uh, <laughs> loud talkative yeah. and popular <laughs> yeah I was sitting here like what deep seated thing did Darius have but Will Smith yeah. is his nemesis yeah, yeah. <laughs> so my nemesis is Will Smith alright uh, cool? I think mine would probably be one of those one of those super villains where I made them cause I fucked up yeah like so I, fighting them is like fighting your own mistakes yeah, uh, it it would be like someone that had a hundred percent total, total like a uh, totally like a right reason to blame me for what they are. It's Red Hood. Yeah, I guess yeah. Yeah, and like it that that would be really tough for me, and that would make sense for my supervillain or like something where like I I survived and they didn't. Something like that. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, Buzz Lightyear hit a villain like that. <laughs> Zerg? Oh, yeah. I think so, in the animated movie. I thought Zerg uh, was his dad. Well, that's in no. the... No. I don't the, think it was Zerg, but... I don't know. One of his, like, teammates or something was, like, on the planet under something. He was like, no, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like, uh... What's his face? Toby from, uh, Naruto. Oh, yeah. yeah. Toby's... That's one good part about Naruto. 100%. Uh, yeah, because Toby just basically hates Kakashi in the Hidden Leaf because he kind of fucked up. Yeah. And, like, Kakashi didn't even finish off his dying wish. And he's like, man, you bitch. Well, I guess I'm a bitch because I'm alive. But, man, you bitch. Yeah. <laughs> and then he took his eye. He gave it to him. Yeah, he gave, he gave it, it to him. him. Yeah. yeah. But he's like, take this, protect Rin. And then he wasn't able to protect Rin. And I'm pretty sure Kakashi even fucking chidori through Rin's chest. So, I mean, like, yeah. I'd be pretty fucking pissed off. Dude took my fucking eye and he fucked up. God damn it. Like, I gave him such good powers. What a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, We, we may not uh be doing a podcast for a while. We got to, like, restructure some things or figure out some things. Maybe. So, this may be the last one for a while. Or, alternatively, it might not be we might actually just do one in two weeks we don't know yeah. it, it could go either way we just gotta do some some soul search and some talking <laughs> but thank you for taking time every day to listen to us i appreciate Beautiful. it we always love you have a good one everybody says that real love james yeah except for you what was that Aaron? says that real love yeah i only give real love okay i don't have fake love in me only if you say if you say so only if i say so you're goddamn right i say so mm-hmm. goodbye everybody <laughs>